Aaron Judge hit another home run yesterday for the Yankees, but C.J. Abrams and the boys, yeah, they had a field day against the Yankees' bullpen. Mookie Betts versus Ronald Acuna Jr. is shaping up to be one of the more insane MVP races right up there with Otani and Judge. The Red Sox almost put up a 20-piece, almost 20 runs off of the Houston Astros of all teams, and Corbin Carroll, he might have had the biggest moment all year for the Diamondbacks. All of that in today's MLB Recap A-Series, in which we recap every single game, almost every single day. And a reminder, if you're going to any games, concerts, anything like that, anytime soon. Use code Fuzzy on SeatGeek to save 20 bucks off. Now, before we talk about the Nationals highlights, I do want to talk about a former National. I cannot believe I just said those words out loud because Steven Strasburg, he is a former National because he is retiring from the game of baseball. Back when he was drafted number one overall, he was the most hyped up pitching prospect in the history of baseball. He was taken first overall. He had 14 strikeouts in his MLB debut. He won a World Series MVP and to begin his career, he was one of the better pitchers in Major League Baseball up until he suffered that injury. I think it was a thoracic outlet syndrome injury. If you guys don't remember, Jared Walsh and a lot of other MLB players have suffered the same injury. It's pretty much the cause of the yips. So Steven Strasburg, I'm not saying he forgot how to pitch, but his arm just does not work properly anymore. And the craziest part about this contract, Steven Strasburg, even though he is retiring and no longer going to be playing professional baseball, the Nationals are so stupid. They did not put insurance on this contract. So they still owe him almost every single Penny, which blows my mind. This is one of the worst contracts in baseball history. And I hate saying that because I really like Steven Strasburg. But honestly, between Anthony Rendon, Steven Strasburg, and Patrick Corbin, some of the players on that World Series winning club from 2018 or 19, some of the worst contracts in baseball history. I'll tip my cap to Steven Strasburg, though, one of my favorite players of all time, or at least pitchers of all time. I was hoping for a comeback in 2024 to pair up with Mackenzie Gore, Josiah Gray, hopefully a healthy Cade Cavalli, but that's not going to happen. And that makes me sad. So because we just talked about a former Nationals player, again, it still blows my mind that Steven Strasburg, he's done. Let's see what happened between the Nationals and the Yankees down in the Bronx. Not a great start for Patrick batting practice Corbin. Judge now has four home runs over his last five at bats. Glaber Torres, he smoked a two-run home run. He has 20 on the season, but here comes the Nationals in the seventh inning as Jake Liu, he singled in Carter Keyboom, and speaking of booms, Alex Call, he went boom on a two-run home run. That put his team out in front, and then make it back-to-back -back home runs. CJ Abrams has been insane in the second half, so in 81 first-half games, he had seven home runs and 14 stolen bases. In 38 second-half games, he has seven home runs and 19 stolen bases. Now, John Carlos Stanton tried to make a comeback all by himself. He had a home run his 19th of the season. He had four base hits in this one game. He had four base hits over his last 11 games combined. The Nationals, they do end up winning this game. They take the series and the Yankees, they fall to five games under 500. So because we talked about the Nationals and Steven Strasburg, I feel like it's only fitting to talk about the team that Strasburg beat for that World Series MVP, the Astros. Um, The Red Sox scored 17 runs. Verdugo, he connected on a solo home run. This wheel yar, wheel air, I don't know how to say his first name. I'm really sorry, but some Something to bray you. That's his first home run. Who is this guy? 430 feet. His swing is so, so smooth. Boston, they ran it up to 10 runs off of Houston rookie starting pitcher JP France. There's a two run single for Devers. Yoshida had an RBI single. All of that run support, by the way, was for Brian Bayo, who carved up the Astros. This kid went seven innings. He allowed just one run the entire night. He's allowed one earned run in three of his last four starts. So he's finally locking in and perfect timing as well. The Red Sox, they're going for a wild card spot. Willier and Devers, they both grabbed their third RBIs of the night and then Willier made it a four RBI day. I really, really like this kid's swing. His double made it 15 runs, and then Connor Wong, he was given an early Christmas gift. That was a free two-run home run as the Red Sox beat the Astros 17-1. to Astros fans are kind of crossing their fingers that the Twins can pull off a W over the Rangers because the Rangers, if they lose this game, they will have lost seven in a row. This was a ball game. This was a lot of fun to watch. Both teams were trading home runs all night long. There was eight home runs in this one game alone. Let's see who comes out on top. So Marcus Simeon, he's in the 20 home run club. You also saw saw Kyle Farmer run into a baseball, and then Corey Seager, he got that run right back. Seager already has 24 home runs, even though he's missed a bunch of games. Michael A. Taylor, he had his first of two. The second came after Leota Tavares went yard for Texas. Michael A. Taylor, he now has a career-high 19 home runs, and he has eight outs above average in center field, so he's been pretty productive. Just like Taylor, Royce Lewis, he has a home run in back-to-back -back games, and he made it a one-run game, and there's a boring double. Obviously, I'm joking. That was still very big for the Minnesota Twins. Correa, he ties it up. He's hitting 300 with 11 RBIs. 
RBIs and nine walks over his last 15 games. It's five to five with Ryan Jeffers at the dish, and that ball got torched. Now, he was hyped up. He should be. On the season, Ryan Jeffers, as a catcher, he's hitting 282 with 10 home runs. Griffin Jacks, he converted the save. The Rangers have officially lost seven games in a row. So the Mariners are now tied with the Astros at one game back of the Rangers for first place in the AL West. It is madness in that division. So the Twins are kind of running away with the AL Central now because the Guardians got smoked in this kind of fake doubleheader. Game number one, it was a continuation of a suspended game. And to be honest, it should have just been canceled. Cleveland had no chance. Hernandez, he doubled in two. And after Freddie drove in one, Mookie knocked in two more. Freddie and Mookie combined for eight hits in this one game. Mookie Betts went five for five. This is easily his best season since winning MVP in 2018. And honestly, I'm not going to say it's better than that season, but he's been insane. Mookie kept it going, and game number two, there he is with an RBI single. Mookie, by the way, is number one in F4 for non-Shohei players. He has a 7 F4 that is leading all positional players, again, not named Otani. Over his last 39 games, he's hitting 400 with 12 home runs and 33 RBIs. Rookie Michael Bush, he connected on his first big league home run off of the other rookie, Mr. Gavin Williams. Another rookie, James Outman, he grabbed two RBIs right before Enrique Hernandez. He took over. He did all of this on his birthday, by the way way. He had an RBI double. He had a home run later on. He just turned 32 years old. He has 12 extra base hits and 15 RBIs in 25 games back with the Dodgers. He is so comfortable in that Dodger blue uniform. He's back. So the trend for these recaps, we kind of always talk about the A's last, but this game earned a mid-game highlight reel because it was a lot of fun to watch. Them facing off against the White Sox. Benny, he had another home run. He has four home runs on the season, two over his last three games. And look at what Luis Rober Jr. did. He robbed Brent Rooker of a potential home run. I don't know if that would have left, but another Spider-Man catch at the wall. I mean, I know Otani, Tucker, Seager, and Simeon are all having MVP years, but Luis, he might be my second place guy if it was up to me. He has 11 outs above average defensively. Shea Langoliers, he went yard again. He has been Cal Raleigh 2.0 over the last week. His three-run home run put the A's up, and the lead's gone. Elvis Andrews, he went yard, and this is exactly why I would vote Luis for second place. He can impact the game on both sides. He robbed Rooker of a maybe home run, and then he goes 445 feet for the lead. He has 34 home home runs. Now, speaking of Rooker, no one is going to rob that one. By the way, that fan made a sick grab, a barehanded catch while holding nachos. Shea Langoliers, he popped off again for a second of the night. He has four home runs over his last four games. And this Zach Geloff kid is ridiculous. He has 10 home runs already. He's only played in 35 games. He's the fastest ace player in franchise history to 10 career home runs. Tony Kemp, he tacked on one as well. Trevor May, he converted his 14 save. The A's, they beat the White Sox, and that was a fun game, not gonna lie. We have the Jays and the Orioles. Toronto is finally looking ready to maybe get a rare win against the Orioles. And Anthony Santander said, psych, his two-run home run tied things up. He's got three home runs over the last 24 hours. And you can't escape this guy. Shout out to my man, AJ Rodriguez, a.k.a. Little Man. You can't escape Cedric Mullins. He hasn't been able to replicate that 30 home run pop from 2021, but that's his 11th. He still has a pretty solid 115 OPS+. plus. Gunnar Henderson, he finished off Baltimore scoring with an RBI single. And Mullins, he pulled a little Ioannis Cespedes later on in the 7th. Do you guys remember when Ioannis, he bobbled that ball and threw AC to home? So Mullins, he pretty much did the exact same thing. He bobbled it, but still nabbed. Danny Jansen at third base. I always thought that Mullins had a noodle arm, but that was an absolute seed right there. Felix Bautista, he didn't strike out anyone again. He has zero strikeouts in three of his last four appearances, which is not good. But then again, he's been really good. He has 33 saves. Baltimore, they've won two in a row. The Blue Jays, they just cannot beat an AL East team. Speaking of AL East teams, Tampa Bay, they are not going to give up. They want to try and catch the Orioles. They are currently on a three-game winning streak, and they're just two games back of Baltimore. Randy made a nice play in foul territory, and then he kind of stood there with fans and just admired how good he is. Then he gave the ball to a fan after that fan went like 0 for 4 on high fives and fist bumps. I thought that was really funny. Luke Rayleigh, he is so underrated. He has 18 home runs and a 135 OPS plus. And look at Basabe driving in more runs. It's 2 to nothing Tampa Bay when it's not 2 to nothing Tampa Bay anymore. Nolan freaking Jones, man. This kid is hitting 285 with 13 home runs. He gave Colorado a lead. But uh, yeah, Isaac Paredes and Josh Lowe, they put a stop to that. Paredes, he almost has 30 home runs. That's home run number 26. Josh Lowe, he seals it. He's been insane. 23 doubles, 17 home runs, 25 stolen bases, and almost 130 OPS+. plus. They found a Kroger's version of Kyle Tucker because he doesn't play the best defense. Fairbanks, he struck out three for a 16 save, and the Rays, they've won four. 
four in a row. Again, they're just two games back of the Orioles. So the Reds and Diamondbacks game ended almost the exact same way as the Rays and Rockies game, but we got to talk about some pitching real quick because starters Merrill Kelly and Brandon Williamson, they combined for 13 shutout innings and 18 strikeouts. Brandon Williamson, the rookie, he tossed six shutout with six strikeouts, which is very good, but Merrill Kelly, he was better. Merrill, he struck out a career high 12 hitters. He only allowed one base hit over seven shutout innings. He has a two ERA and 37 strikeouts over his last 30 innings in August. Arizona, they finally got him a run. He is in line for a W and the Arizona bullpen imploded. Nick Senzel, he had a pinch hit home run, but anytime Nick Senzel is facing a lefty, you're going to give up a home run. He is just an auto home run cheat code against lefties. Tyler Stevenson, he singled in Noel V. Marte for the go ahead. So how is this like Tampa Bay? Corbin Carroll, he stepped up just like Josh Lowe did. The superstar rookie lefty outfielder, he seals it for his squad. That two run home run gives him 22 home runs, 38 stolen bases, a 135 OPS plus, one of the craziest rookie seasons in MLB history. Paul Sewald, with some help of the umpire, he struck out two. He has 28 saves. The Diamondbacks, they've won five in a row. They're eight and two over their last 10, and they're in the thick of things in the NL wild card. And so are the Chicago Cubs, but the Pirates, they're going to try their best to play spoiler in this game. The Cubs, they started off dinking and ducking Bellinger. He singled in one, and Nico, he did the same thing later on in the second. But here comes the Pirates. They are ready to plunder the locks, as Andrew McCutcheon once said in an ESPN commercial. You guys remember that? I love that commercial. Josh Palacios, he has been a power menace lately. Five home runs and 12 RBIs over his last 58 at-bats. So it's now 3-3, three to three, and again, it's kind of a must-win game for the Cubs, considering how red-hot the Diamondbacks have been. This one is going to need extras, and Ian Happ, he put the Cubs out in front with one of the most MLB The Show base hits I've ever seen. He scores one, and then a second scores after Connor Joe mishandled it. Adbert Alzali, the new closing pitcher for the Cubs, apparently he has an arm made of metal. He was out there again. He got his 20th save of the season, and over the last 50 days, he has 15 saves, which is by far the most in Major League Baseball. The Cubs, they're kind of sitting pretty comfortably in that second place wildcard spot. Actually, real quick, an update on the division standings. Again, like we said, the Rays are two games back of the Orioles. The Twins are running away right now with the AL Central, and the AL West is madness. One game back, the Astros. One game back, the Mariners, and the Rangers have lost seven in a row. We don't have to talk about the Braves because they're going to win that division. The Brewers are three games ahead of the Cubs and four games ahead of the Reds, and then the NL West is settled. It's going to be the Dodgers. The NL Wild Card is far from settled because the Marlins are two games back. The Reds and the Giants are tied at a half game back of the Diamondbacks, and the Cubs are a half game ahead of the Diamondbacks for the second place spot, and the Phillies are only two and a half games ahead of the Cubs for first place. Like, the NL Wild Card is going to make people lose their mind. The AL Wild Card still has some teams in it, like the Red Sox and the Blue Jays, but it's not as crazy. The Yankees and the Angels, I think you can kind of write their season off as it's over. So you have the Red Sox, the Blue Jays, and the Astros, as well as the Mariners, all fighting for that final wild card spot. All right, today's immaculate grid. We have the Braves and the Brewers. I'm going to go with an easy one. Orlando Arcia. What is that? 14%. Okay. The Rangers and the Brewers. Don't ask me how I know this. I think he had a really good Battle Royale card in MLB The Show, so I always use them. Matt Bush, the former, I think he was a number one overall pick before he went to prison or something like that. A Hall of Famer for the Brewers, Robin Yout. I think I might save Robin, because that's going to be a high rarity pick. I don't know if I want to use that. The Braves and the Nationals. The Braves and the Nationals. No one is coming to my head right now. The Rangers and the Nationals. The Rangers and and the Nationals. Again, no one's coming to my head. Hall of Famer for the Nationals. Come on, man. I can't spell sometimes. Donson. Andre Dawson. Here we go. 12% a Brave and a Cub. I'm going to go Jorge Soler. If you guys don't remember, he came up with the Cubs, I believe. 3%. Look at me. The Rangers and the Cubs. Rangers and the Cubs. Cole Hamels. He just retired as well. I'm pretty sure he was on both teams. Yes, he was. A Hall of Famer for the Cubs, Ernie Banks, Mr. Cub. I could go with uh, Greg Maddox. I think I'm going to go Greg Maddox just as a kind of sneaky, hopefully not as 10%. There we go. I feel like Ernie Banks would have been a lot higher. Hall of Famer for the Brewers. The only one that's coming to my head is Robin Yao. But what about, um, did Hank Aaron play for the Brewers? I'm going to go with Robin Yao just because I don't want to mess that up. I'm going to just go for the easy one. 47%. Okay, Robin. Nationals. Braves Nationals. No one's coming to my head. The Rangers and the Nationals. Who played for the Rangers and the Nationals? I'm going to have to think about these two. Wait, wait. I think I just, I don't know if he played... <sighs> This is tough. I don't know if Ian Desmond, I know he played for the Rockies, but did he play for the Rangers? 
Ian Desmond, back in the day, was one of my favorite players. So that's actually a fun pick. I haven't heard about the name Ian Desmond in quite some time, but I knew that he was on the Nationals when he was at his peak. And then he went to the Rockies, the Rangers, and then kind of fell off. Was Brad Hand on the Braves? I think Brad Hand was on the Nationals. Maybe Sean Doolittle. I'm thinking of guys like Denard Spann. I'm thinking of maybe Ben Revere. I feel like all of those guys might have played for both squads, but I'm trying to think of one that might be a low rarity score. I'm almost positive that Brad Hand played for both. I... I feel good about this, but okay. There we go, 114, that's not terrible. That does it for today's recap. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe if you're brand new. We post these almost every single day. And my gaming channel, Fuzzy Gaming, we're on the road to 100,000 subs. Click on that, subscribe, and I'll see you over there.